وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيته وما للظالمين من أنصار صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Today, inshallah, we're going to start the last very few ayat of Surah Al Imran. About these ayat, and comes in a hadith that it comes from various Sahaba. The famous one is from Had Ata in the Rabah, Rabi Allah, Rabi Abi Rabah, that he came to Sayyidah Aisha, Rabi Allah, and asked that tell me something extraordinary about the Prophet. So she said that everything about the Prophet was extraordinary. Which one particular thing should I? tell you about then she said that one night the Prophet ﷺ came to me and laid down in bed and then asked me permission to let him do ibadah to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he after getting the permission he got up and he started praying and in Qiyam he started crying and kept on crying and kept on crying and made a very long Qiyam then he went to Ruku and kept on crying therein and made a very long Ruku then so and so Similarly in Sajda and after raising his head he kept on crying for so long till it became Fajr time, it became morning. So I asked the Prophet وسلم, that why are you crying so much when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all your sins. The Prophet وسلم, said that should I not then become a thankful slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Should I not become a thankful slave, slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why should not I, I have cried? When tonight these ayat, these verses of the Quran were revealed to me, the ones that we just read, Nafi Khalq Samawati al Ard. And then the Prophet said, O oh Aisha, woe be upon that Ummati of mine. Woe be or destruction be upon that person from my Ummah who does not ponder over these ayat, who does not think deeply about these ayat. So these ayat, In Nafi Khalq Samawati wal Ardi wa Khtilaf al Layli wal Nahari. The ayat in the Ulil Albab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that definitely in the creation, what is khalq? Khalq is to create from nothingness, out of nothingness. There was nothing in between, nothing before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that kind of a creator, that kind of a khalq who creates out of nothing. All the skies and whatever is within them and the earth. And the other meaning is in the creation of all things that are high and all things that are low. And whatever is contained and whatever has that height and whatever has that lower uh, lower station. So there's creations that live in the skies, there's creations that live in the air, there's creations that live on the earth, there's creations that are brought forth out of the earth, all of these somebody who ponders over them and وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ in the changing of night into day or in the overcoming of night into overcoming of night and day over each other so night comes and overpowers the day and day comes and overpowers the night similarly اختلاف also means that there is difference in duration of day and night and it's according to a very set calculated uh, pattern. Places have different lengths of days and nights. If you start going farther away from the equator towards the North Pole, these durations start to change. The durations start to increase of day and of night. And according to seasons, there is difference. 
and that difference has been maintained for from day one and there has not been even a difference of a single second all of these things have ayat have signs have evidence they are hinting towards someone only for those people who are ulil albab those people who are in their right mind who are who have who have wisdom so what is wisdom hazrat mufassir have done a discussion here that wisdom in the terms of quran and hadith is not basic uh, use of your faculties and getting things out of it for example animals they are able to see they are able to perceive they are able to touch they are able to smell what makes human beings different from animals is aql is wisdom and what is that wisdom the difference is that human beings not only use these faculties to perceive but they derive a conclusion out of their perception whatever they understand from this whatever they perceive from these senses they go forth and derive a conclusion from it so when we talk about science science is based on what we can perceive from our senses but wisdom is that we after perception we derive a higher conclusion ulama have mentioned an example that if a person has no knowledge of the civil world hypothetically speaking he's he's been raised away from civilization in a jungle or wherever and he comes to a train station and he sees that a huge magnificent thing with a smoke bellowing out of it and with a lot of things that is put that is being pulled by it on its back is coming and all of a sudden a very small red flag is shown to it and it stops that person is going to think perceiving from his senses he is going to think that that small red flag has is more powerful than whatever this big engine was coming because it has the capacity to stop the whole thing but the people who know the civilized world and how it works would say no the red flag has no power of its own but the real power belongs to the hand which is carrying that red flag and the engineer that is operating the engine so seeing that red flag they stopped the train but if you go further did the engineer and the flag bearer the flag carrier physically actually stop the train themselves no they did something that caused the train to stop for example applying the brakes or cutting off the throttle or whatever so what does the real power then belong to to the force that is creating the energy but then the steam or the coal or the diesel whatever fuel was in there and the way it is being used to operate the train did that all do do did that all do that on on its own no so finally we reach that there is someone else who actually designed it that way someone else who actually designed it that way all of that but the science stops here it says when it comes to creation and this is this is not something that i i'm perceiving only uh, bringing from the book here but this is how it is this is how science is taught to us that this happened because of this when we when we talk about creation for example the creation of the skies and the earth and the coming and going of days science starts to explain it but then draws a line at a certain point and this this has happened that every time in our biology class specifically when you were talking about it we'll keep on going this happened because this because this because this then what then what who designed the whole system and the books say that we draw a line here so then so this these people who draw a line cannot be called ulul albab or the people of wisdom in the words of quran or by any sense basically because if you are out there to find the real reason why would you draw a line why would you not go a step beyond that line and find out the real creator so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the people who have wisdom in in these very signs 
alone. The creation of the skies and the earth and how they work and how the day and night come and go, they can find signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is quoted in tafasir from the sayings of various pious predecessors and the Sahaba that everything that they used to look at, they would find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. They would find it leading them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So and so that they said that every single thing is a blessing to us. Even the hardships, even those things that we do not call blessing are a blessing to us because they direct us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In every hardship, in every setback that connects us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a blessing itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining it, that what are the people who are ulul albab, who are the people that we call the wise people according to our terms. Alladheena yathburoon Allah. The people who remember Allah. Number one, the people who remember Allah. And not only remember Him once, but keep on remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, rem they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, and they keep on remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qiyamu wa qurudu wa ala junubihim. Be them standing in a state of standing, be them sitting, be them or lying on their sides. They are always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first criterion of somebody being called a wise person is that they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excessively. This remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such that every ibadah, every form of worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set limits upon. Salah, there's limits. You can do it on a specific time, specific day, in a specific position. With specific conditions being met. Similar is the case if you look at zakah, if you look at siyam, all of the other forms of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has specified a time, a spe specified a form. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Udhkurullah kaseera. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excessively. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in each and every state of theirs. Be them standing, be them sitting down, be them lying down. They remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And they ponder, they think deeply upon, in the creation of Samawat and Earth, skies and the earth. And then with their pondering, with their thought, they reach this conclusion, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, you have not created this in vain. You have not created this without purpose. The real purpose is that it directs us to you that it makes us reach you. Subhanak, you are pure. You are pure of every inferiority. You are pure of all defects. Faqina adab and nar. And all this pondering and all this zikr, all this belief, all this connection in you, in, in, in finding you, are, we ask you to all of this that <coughs> give us the ultimate achievement of all this, which is deliverance in the hereafter. Faqina adab and nar safeguard us from the fire of uh, of hell, the torment of fire. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll pause here, inshallah, for the, till the next week. Next Monday, inshallah, we'll do a ma'arif of this ayah, and inshallah, the next ayah. الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين اللهم اجعلنا من أهل القرآن الذي أهل القرآن خاصة اللهم إن قلوبنا ونواصينا وجوارحنا بيدك لم تملكنا منها شيئا فإن ذا فعلت ذلك بنا فكن أنت وليهنا وحينا إلى سواء السبيل صلى الله تعالى على خير خلق سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه المعين آمين رحمة الله الرحيم